Yeah, I've been using this uh, 3D printer and sometimes when I set it up it works good. Other times not so good. And I'm getting tired of trying to get the bed flat so I thought I'd come up with something a little different. Now the last time I used this, this is how it's set. So I made up this little dial indicator. I put it over here. I got about zero. And I'll put it on this side. I got about plus 40. We'll put it in the back. Uh, what is that? Uh, got like 30, plus 30. So we'll go over here to this side. I got about uh, negative five on that from the zero. So what I think is going on is that the bed is tipped. And if I measure, I measure here, well, I put blocks under here. These blocks and these blocks, they're the same height to make this bar and this base piece the same. So we know that this bar is true to the base piece because these spacers are the same. So if I measure this, I get uh, 3 inch 067. If I measure this, I get about 300. So what's happening is this when I did the the tramming last time you know what happens is you you put the paper under there and you know you, you go to all four corners this and that but see when this unit is engaged and these little stepper motors are on it locks up these screws so that this bar wherever it is that's where it's going to stay in relationship to the up and down motion so if this bar is true straight across it's going to stay true as it goes down and up But what happens is that when you you prepare it and you home it, it goes to the position over here, and the motors are still locked together. But when you disengage the motors, and now the motors are are free from the bar and the bar will move. See this? I got this piece under here and it's really tight. That's because the weight of all this stuff here 
is on that piece. Now if I rotate this, I rotate this lead screw a little bit. I can feel it come up and go down. See now they won't go in. So I have to rotate this to bring it up. To stick that under there and now it's just sunk right back down onto it. Now this one over here is free. Because there's no weight on this guy. So that's what's happening is when you disengage the motors to put the piece of paper on there to check it this side sinks and this size stays the same so this bar that controls this is actually going in a, a downward slope all the time because this piece is lower and this piece is higher so, I was so frustrated with this from before. I mean, I, I was doing this for like an hour and a half trying to get this. And I finally decided, you know, something's got to be done. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this indicator... And I'm going to make this table flat off of the base piece. I'm going to set this corner, set this corner, that corner, and that corner. So it's all perfectly flat. So by having, having these pieces in here, when it first starts engaging the motors turning the unit on and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the Z so that the motors are engaged stay, they stay engaged while I remove these pieces so then it's, I'm going to let it come down and do the zero And it's going to come down over on this corner, and it's going to be where it's supposed to be, except for the fact that on this print head, I made this adjustable plate. So what's going on here is this plate in the back is the original plate, and it had holes in it to go into this unit to hold it in place so what I did was I made this adapter plate so when this unit comes down to home this adapter plate I can raise or lower it and like it'll be in the up position and then when it homes out in the corner I'll lower it down put the piece of paper under it and use this adjustment screw to get the thickness of that paper so it just slides under that nozzle and then you go in the back and you can tighten those screws The original screws and it'll lock it in place. And what I also did was that when it's in that position, and if for some reason we know that this table is going to be true to the base, so I'll measure this side. Then I'll come over here and I'll measure this side. 
And if there's any any difference, I slotted this adjustment nut. This is where the the um, this holds the the original hole was right here and right there, and it was fixed. So what I did was I slotted that in a circular fashion. So when you rotate this and you hold this piece, this this piece here, this this piece will actually move up and down. So I can compensate for any deviation from this one side to this other side. So once that's compensated and this bar when the motors are engaged is true with the table which is true with the the base plate all I have to do is do my adjustment here bring this down until that little piece of paper slides underneath there then lock it down and I shouldn't have to adjust it anymore that should be it now when I I get finished and I do this I go to run something else at some other time I can just simply raise this up and everything else will be true except for maybe this bar will need a slight adjustment from here to here but once the table is true I don't have to move it again because what actually sets this distance is that switch on the bottom when this comes down and homes and hit that switch that's what sets the height of this bar which controls the height of this piece so by having this piece come up and then push it back down, I can control the depth of that. And I shouldn't have to fiddle around with this thing like I used to have to do. So I just wanted to show that to you because I really got tired of trying to get this thing level so I think this will work out good I got about a quarter inch adjustment in there so I'll raise it up home it out and then lower it until that piece of paper slips under there lock this screw down then lock the bolts in the back double check the height between here and there and then lock these screws down and uh, I think that'll solve the problem yeah the other issue I was having was this This uh, piece that they gave me, see right here, you see that's all chewed up, because what was happening was that this, this piece here, which holds this tube in place, was down here so it was getting hot so the little fingers inside of here were crimping down on that tube and actually melting into the tube and it wasn't allowing the PLA to come in this motor was clicking because it couldn't push the PLA because the little fingers on this piece collapsed that tube and wasn't allowing the 
PLA to move through. So I changed that to a higher temperature tube and I made a extension on there to raise it up to get it away from that heat source and it's working out real good. And I also made a uh, stand to put my PLA on. A little adjustable stand. I can loosen that nut and raise this up or down depending on the diameter of this this PLA. I got a clamp to the table because what happened before is that it was on this stock piece and I grabbed this box to move it and I accidentally pulled that card out and it stopped my program and it ruined the card. So I was trying to move it and I, and I accidentally hit that. But now we solved that problem. But anyway, just thought I'd throw it out there. Alright. Talk to you later.